Hi everyone. So remember the times when we thought that 3G was lightning fast or when 4G was the big thing and we streamed our first high definition video without buffering. So it rings a bell, doesn't it? But now we uh, live in the 5G era. Things are different. Uh, it's not about faster internet anymore. It's about interconnecting everything and enabling applications, amazing applications like uh, self-driving cars, like remote surgery or whatever you guys are doing. And I hope you are doing much. And I, I can give you a, a hint that I just thought when I was sitting over there, I have with me this tablet with my keywords, you know, for the speech, in case I forget something. But I wish I had ChatGPT, you know, whispering in my ear. The next keyword it would be great. So feel free to implement this next idea and become the next billionaire, hopefully for you. So um, all these applications have something in common, this interconnection. But there is a catch in these 5G networks. Uh, managing and optimizing them, it's not a piece of cake. It's, it's really complex. So what we need is we, we need a, like a trusted sidekick. We need, we need an assistant that will help us in this uh, axe. So uh, this is where AI comes in place. So imagine having AI and 5G working together and uh, having a network to self-heal, uh, having a network without dead zones, so having everybody happy, all of us with our mobile phones. So this is what I'll try to uh, describe in the next slides very fast. We'll do a deep dive. We have very short time to do that. So buckle up and let's start. So uh, if you're not in telco, of course, you wouldn't know that. But in the old times, when we had to manage these networks, we acted like, you know, watching a pot waiting to boil over before turning the heat down. This is reactive management. So we wait for an incident to happen. And then, you know, in telco operators, everybody's running to understand what the problem is, to uh, point where the problem is, and then understand why it has happened. So all this, in order to, to happen fast, you need something like a rule-based, predefi predefined set of rules to do that. So more or less, it's like a cookbook recipe that you need to follow. But in 5G, things are not that simple. Um, so uh, instead of having a simple dish, it's like having to juggle while you're cooking 10 dishes. So you have intricate dishes with a lot of uh, components and ingredients. So components can be like the 5G network, fixed wireless access. This is FWA, for those of you who have who have a little bit of telco knowledge, but we also have in the mix visualization. We have this traffic bursting. Everybody knows how the telco operators are now you know, giving to all of us unlimited data. So imagine what happens to the network when everybody is using this un unlimited data. So there are a lot of things to be done. So the kitchen now looks like a chaotic kitchen. So we need something like a master chef. The, this master chef is someone that anticipates problems, that learns and adjusts. So instead of following a, like a cookbook recipe, it rewrites this cookbook all the time. So um, how does that work? Um, so we have AI that all the time reads data, crunches data in order to work. And by doing that, it is able to predict traffic and all the things that we want to predict in a network, but also uh, spot problems very fast. But you may ask, OK, what's the difference? I mean, with the old tools, we could also, you know, kind of predict what, what will happen, you know, like that. We say, oh, OK, traffic is going to explode. Uh, we could spot problems. But we want AI now to, to, to act, not only spot things, but act and solve them. Kind of implementing some feedback loops that we act with AI and see the results and again and again 
in order to optimize everything. So if we do that, what do we gain? So uh, we save, you know, bucks of money <laughs> because the operational costs become, become smaller. Uh, we also have the customers, all of us, the subscribers more happy. So that means that nobody leaves, so we don't lose revenue. The telco operators don't lose revenue. You know, the brand is not suffering because everybody's happy. Nobody's complaining on the social media. But uh, on top of that, the cherry on top is like we have a very much better performance. But this is not only that. We want the AI to be able to, to be a scalable solution. So as the network is expanding, as the traffic is going up, we want it to be able to still operate. And we want to be able to adjust to continuous learning. So we need mechanisms that make these AI systems to always retrain, monitor their own performance, so on and so forth. So because we are talking about large scale systems here, we are not talking about a small application that runs on a laptop, this, this becomes crucial. And this is not the only challenge. You know, I, I guess all of you, everybody that's working on this space knows the challenges, right? But in the telco space, we have a little bit some different things. So, you know, availability of data, you all know about that. Uh, in the telco world, it's a little bit more complex. There's a lot of data that in the telco operators. But if you want to predict something, and I'll give you an example, if you want to, to predict the best location to put a base station, really you don't have data about that. So what can you do? You need to simulate. So you need uh, good simulation programs. So that's why I'm, I place this digital twin here. So we need uh, intelligent software, again, that runs on the background that is able to simulate what will happen if we do something, some what-if scenarios. We have the problem of data quality. You all know, garbage in, garbage out. Okay? But also, we have this data correlation problem that is huge in telco. What is the problem here? Imagine when you pick up your phone and you try to call. The, the backend systems, what they do is that they record that you're trying to call. This is one record. And then you establish the call, and it starts. This is another record that goes in another place. And then when the, the call ends, or, or while you walk, you change the base station or driving. So that's another record that goes elsewhere. So at the end, for a single call, you have you know, lots of data everywhere. In order to, to do something intelligent, you need to correlate all that. So this is kind of a problem, a very specific problem for the telco world, which is important. But there are other problems as well. No telco network is single vendor. So for example, here in Greece, all the operators have equipment for, from Ericsson, from Huawei, Nokia, you name it. So your solution needs to be able to read data from all these vendors, unify them in order to work. That's another problem. And scalability. Privacy, you know, GDPR, of course, uh, continuous monitoring, explainability whenever you act. You need to be able to explain why you did that. It's a huge problem. So uh, if you ask, what can you do in a network? A lot, really a lot. There are a lot of domains to, uh, to work on, a lot of things to be done. We are doing that. I'm working in a company, Intercom Telecom, that we are doing a lot of that stuff over there that you see. I need some time to explain them all, I will not. But I'll give you some examples, starting from the top, network planning. Uh, we have this uh, capacity planning. It's you know, very easy to understand. Whenever you plan a network, you, you want to deploy it. You need to, to forecast what is going to be the capacity, how many subscribers, how much traffic you will have. But once you deploy it, and uh, you have other problems, you need to understand how it performs. I mean, how do you think they do that? you know? So what the telco operators are doing, they're getting cars, you know, the equipment, they put equipment, which is very expensive, and they go around, just like Google goes around with them to produce the maps. So they go around with this equipment, and they measure all the radio conditions of the network, you know, to understand. And you can imagine how expensive that is. So that's another very good idea for AI. So you do it uh, virtually, you predict. Uh, the radio conditions in every place, inside buildings, outside buildings. So there are a lot of use cases to be done. Anomaly detection, the second one, 
self-healing of problems, and so on and so forth. Energy congestion, energy savings, customer efficiency. I have some uh, examples uh, to show you more specifically. So what we are doing, we are doing, we have some prob prob products in some of these areas, but we have also, you know, initiated a huge investment, which was on the press just a few days ago. That is why it's not in this presentation. It's a more than 40 million investment to produce next generation products that incorporate AI, and that will have a lot of these capabilities. This is a three-year uh, program uh, that will continue, and we hope to reach something like 80 million uh, investment in order to, def to develop all these products that will incorporate all these capabilities. So, a, a specific example, energy saving, what we can do in a 5G network. So, um, you can imagine how the network works a little bit. So, you have a baseline, this is the, like the antenna that you connect with your mobile phone. Okay, then whenever you call or you, you browse the internet, all this connection, the data, they go through the antenna, they go to the core systems at the back end of the telco operator. So, you have a lot of equipment. We have, you have equipment at the edge, as we call it, of the network, and you have equipment at the core. So, what was the case in the past? Um, you know, the, the big vendors, you know, like Ericsson or Huawei, and everybody like that, had uh, specialized equipment. So, specialized hardware with specialized software, fine-tuned for performance, very, very expensive. So, what happened? Uh, virtualization came for hardware, VMs, so, uh, all the telco operators moved from these specialized hardware to virtualized ones. And now, they're going to cloud-native ones, like containerized uh, uh, software. And th this runs on, you know, common of the self hardware. So, like servers that we all use with Intel CPUs and so on and so forth. And the problem is that because these are not tightly coupled, this software with the hardware, uh, the energy saving is, is not good. So the problem that you have in the network is that the traffic is not continuous. It's not uh, at the same level all the time. You can imagine during the night, nobody you know, sees videos. Or some see, but not a lot of people. So in the weekends, the traffic increases. Um, you may have also events like uh, soccer stadiums that you have a lot of traffic. So you, you need to be able to, to save energy when you can. It's very important. And this is what we do with this product. So we predict in real time, in the next time window, the traffic. And then we, we tweak you know, the, the resources of the servers, like the CPU frequencies and memories and stuff like that, in order to minimize, minimize the energy consumption. And by doing that, and this is how we do it, so you have the traffic on top and then the CPU frequency on the, on the bottom chart. By doing this uh, thing, simple thing, not very simple, we, we managed to have something like 45% of energy saving. And this is really huge. Why? Because as you see in this dashboard where we display, uh, this is like 45% of energy saving on a server, but it's not a server. In a network, you have thousands of servers. So if you have thousands of servers and you, you save like a thousand euros per server yearly, this amounts to millions. So th this becomes important. And also, I'm sure you know that there is uh, from the EU and every country is trying to be, you know, like uh, uh, carbon neutral or net zero. Uh, so the sustainability effort is huge. So this is one use case. Uh, yeah. But you need to remember that achieving something like that is not easy. So like AI, everything is complex. You need to fine tune everything. So we started in 2020. We did some POCs with Cosmote. We continued up to 2022. And then for a year, we were fine tuning. And from the initial 20% of saving, we reached this 45%. So this is a journey. And we have made a very important POC in Japan. With, what, with KDDI, which is this, the, one of the biggest operators in the world that achieved this uh, 37 energy saving. Now we have reached 45 by fine tuning the, the models. Uh, another example is a proactive customer experience. So um, 
I don't know if you think what, what, what the telco operator is doing when we all, all of us are talking on the phone. So they don't know really how you perceive the network. So the only thing they know that they get some measurements from the network and they believe that the network is behaving okay, good performance. But really, do they know the, the experience of each one of us? No. So we have created a solution that does that with using what we call a uh, customer satisfaction index. This is like a complex hierarchical model that uses key performance indicators to create for each one of the subscribers his own metric that measures the customer experience. So once you do that, you can move to the next level and start doing forecasting. So we know that your experience today is like 75%, where when we believe that above 75% is good enough for the network. And then we, we predict what will happen in one month. Why? Because in one month, you know, more subscribers are coming in. More traffic is, uh, is, is getting to the network. So you do, you, we do this traffic forecasting, and then we do this uh, root cause analysis whenever we see a problem. Uh, and then we do customer segmentation. Customer segmentation, why? Because there are some people which are more important than the others. And this is what the telco operators are doing. They're trying to, you know, the high value customers, they try to give them the best experience. So if you have only a prepaid uh, mobile, uh, I'm sorry, you will not get the best experience. But if you're paying like uh, 500 euros per month, your satisfaction index will increase because they will make it like that. Um, this is like a case study that we have a customer in Serbia which is doing this thing and this is an example of how you can uh, monitor your experience in, in the country, you know, with colors or, you know, what this map at the bottom shows is that across a road the experience is not very good, to be expected in some ways because everybody is moving fast, okay. And then you have all these predictions, segmentations, and so on and so forth. Um, wrapping up, I hope I was not too fast. So uh, the networks are not getting simpler. They are getting more and more complex. And uh, the old recipes do not work anymore to manage them. We need something more intelligent. And AI, we believe, is the key technology that make, will make this management more efficient. Nevertheless, it's not easy to implement AI, you all know it. In the networks, it's very complex. Uh, because I play music and I have a, a band and an orchestra, uh, I, you know, I think that it's, it's like getting a new guy in the band. I, mean, it, I guess, I think that this is similar to putting an AI in production. So whenever we bring, we bring a new person in the band, you don't have to look only if he plays you know, nicely, his technique is good. That's not the whole point. Does he fit with the other guys? Does he play nice with the other guys? Will he be uh, good in the long run? So it's the same here with AI. What will happen in one month, two months? You will need to monitor that, fine tune it, retrain it, evaluate it constantly. So it's not, not something like you, you build it and forget it. Okay. And there are real use cases in the network where this can be done. I showed you how we can make, you know, like Mother Earth smile a little bit by reducing energy consumption, and how you can make a, a network get a brain in order to attend its subscriber specifically. And there, as I said, there are many, many more things to be done, and some of them are really complex, like what we're looking at now, trying to, to minimize the interference in the networks, because these are wireless networks, and each base station affects the neighbor ones. But if you play with one, you affect the other ones. So this is like a very complex problem to solve. And we're trying to do that in the networks in the long run. So thank you very much. Thank you for uh, following up in this journey. And I'm open to questions.